a quick little trick called linearization. All right, so let's go straight into it. Here's some data. All right, this is some data we've gathered about. Uh, it could be, you know, the temperature of something cooling off or a or, uh, number of bacteria. You know, it, it has some type of a little bit of a, a curve to it here. You could put a straight line through it, right? And it kind of fits the data. And in fact, you do get uh, a correlation coefficient of about negative 0.96, okay? Which is actually a pretty good correlation coefficient, right? Um, that's a, that would be considered a strong linear correlation. But when we look at it with our eyes, you can see this end has some points that are a little bit above, and this end down here has some points that are above and then in the middle we've got stuff that's kind of below there right so it seems like maybe it would actually make a little more sense to have a curve going something like this right either an exponential maybe with some type of asymptote down here or even a quadratic right so what I want to do is show you a way that we can uh, find out whether this is uh, exponential or not all right so if it's exponential Okay, then the y value, the b, I believe that stands for bacteria, would equal some constant times e to the ct power, right? And those, oops, sorry. And those uh, parameters, the a and the c, are constants that we could solve for, right? And we could hopefully be able to find whether this would actually be a, a uh, exponential function. All right, now I want to show you something real quick. If I were to take the natural log of both sides, okay, so I take the natural log of this side and the natural log of that side, I end up over here with the natural log of B equals the natural log of A times E to the CT all together. Okay, now if I use the rule that says when I have two things being multiplied inside of a log, that I can add them, that this then becomes natural log of B equals natural log of A plus natural log of E to the CT power, which of course, then the natural log and the E are inverses, they cancel each other out, leaving me with the natural log of B equals the natural log of A plus C times T. Now this is interesting because what I have here then is the natural log of B is equal to a constant here plus a constant times my x value. Or in other words, if I rearrange this just a little bit, I'm going to rewrite it as ct plus natural log of a, which now is y equals mx plus b. So the y-intercept of this line would be the natural log of a, the C would be the slope of this line, and natural log of B would be the Y value. T, of course, is still my X value. So what this means is if I graph for my Y value, the natural log of B, and I graph for the X value T, if I get a linear graph, then it means that this function right here, the purple one, B equals AE to the CT power, is actually a correct um, function for this relationship, all right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a table that has the natural log of B uh, for the Y values and then going to keep T for the X values there, okay? So what I did is I went into my calculator and I typed all of these into my A list on my spreadsheet and then I typed all of these into the B list on my spreadsheet. All right, and when you do that, then what I can do is I can just go in here and go natural log of 96, and then I can go natural log of 79. I don't even need the number there. I can just type this straight into my calculator, and so I'm actually doing the natural log of all those numbers so that I can get this natural log of B right here, all right? And so then I'll go natural log of 30, natural log of 23, natural log of 15 and natural log of 12. Now, when I do that, this is what the graph looks like, okay? Now, you can see, I'm going to flip back, that my x values, the t values, still go from about 1.6 up to 16.4, right? Here's my 1.6 right there. 
Here's my 16.4 there. So all the x values are staying the same. What's changing here is that the y values, the y value for 1.6 isn't 96 anymore. It's the natural log of 96. And so the natural log of 96, and you can check this on your calculator, is uh, over 4.4, right? Um, so what you can see is that it is actually giving me a very nice straight line, okay? And this really nice straight line here, just like this, okay? That one actually has a correlation coefficient of negative 0.9998, all right? Now, this correlation of negative 9.96 was nice, but this one is obviously even better. It's closer to one. Okay, so what that means is that we have a pretty good feeling that B equals AE to the CT is the correct function, all right? Now, remember, we found out here that C was the slope, and then the natural log of A is my y-intercept. So I can go in here, and I can get my y-intercept, and that would be... B, which is the natural log of A right there. And so I could say that the y-intercept, whatever that value is, is equal to natural log of A. And then I could find the slope, and the slope is equal to C, right? That's what we saw right here, that the slope was equal to C. And then once I have C and A, I would actually have an exponential graph, B equals AE to the CT, that is a better fit than the linear graph would have been. All right, so this is a way to prove, you could say, to prove that a function is an exponential function. Now, some of you that are in physics have seen this before. We did this with uh, inverse relationships and inverse squared and with quadratics. We hadn't done it with exponentials yet, but this is one way to do it, okay? Now, one thing to be aware of is that sometimes we may say, well, what if this is a power function? In this case, we had thought that the x value was the, uh, the, the power, right? It was b equals a e to the power of ct. So that was our x value right there, right? But what if we thought instead that the relationship was supposed to be b equals a times t to the c power? Let's do the same thing that we did last time. I'll show you what it'll end up looking like. So if I take the natural log of this side and the natural log of that side, okay, I get the natural log of B equals the natural log of A times T to the C, which of course can be split up to the natural log of A times, uh, sorry, plus the natural log of T to the C power. Okay. The C then gets brought in front. That's one of our natural log rules, our log rules. And we got natural log of B equals natural log of A plus C times the natural log of T. Okay, very similar to last time, we have now a Y equals MX plus B. I've got a linear graph here, okay? This time, the Y-intercept would be natural log of A. This time, the slope is c, but my x value needs to be the natural log of t, not just t. The y value, of course, is still natural log of b. All right, so I could go back into that same table as before, this one right here, and I could go natural log of 1.6, natural log of 3, put natural log in front of all those, put natural log in front of all these, and so then I would be graphing the natural log of t versus the natural log of b. All right, now when I did that, I went ahead and put that into my calculator and this is what it looks like, okay? We said that if this is the true relationship, if it is B equals A T to the C, then I should get a linear graph when I graph the natural log of B for my Y value and the natural log of T for my X value, right? Unfortunately, that is not what I get here, right? When I do this, I get a curve, okay? Which means that it's definitely not that second option, okay? It definitely has to be the first one where it's an exponential, not the second one where it's a power. So this is exponential, 
where t is the power, where x is the power, and then this is a power function where t is the base. Okay, both of them use two constants, right, two parameters, but they're different types of functions based off of where the x is. Okay, now um, just kind of in closing, you'll practice this tonight, uh, deciding whether it should be exponential or power and then proving it by doing the natural log of the table and, and either putting it in your calculator or graphing it by hand, either way is fine. Um, but one thing you need to recognize is that most of the time on your calculator, they could just say, you know, take my data points, uh, take my data points and find the regression equation. And in that case, you don't need these natural logs, right? If it just says to find the equation, you put this in for your A column, right, in your spreadsheet, and then this is your B column, and then you go into your menu and you do a statistical regression, and you can just do an, uh, an exponential regression, or you can do a power regression, right? And most of the time, that's perfectly fine. You can just do one of those two. If the question specifically asks you to use linearization, then you have to use one of the two processes that we just talked about, where you take the natural log of both sides and you show that it's either linear for the exponential, which is what we did in the first situation, which is how we proved that this function is an exponential function, or you, by taking the natural log of both sides, you can show that the natural log of y versus the natural log of x is a linear function with a slope and an intercept. And in that case, then you'll be able to show that it is a power function, okay? So tonight you're gonna to be practicing that. Please do practice using linearization. See if you can figure out what these parameters are, the a and the c. Recognize that they're gonna come from the slope and the intercept of your graph, okay? And then, go ahead and go into your calculator and put the regular data in and find whether uh, the exponential regression or the power regression will give you, hopefully, what you calculated by hand when you did the linearization. All right? Um, awesome. This is a great skill. It's something that you can use in your physics internal assessments, something that you could possibly feasibly use in a mathematical internal assessment. So, uh, yeah, good luck and give it...